These two brothers created a $3 billion company out of sheer frustration. Roy and Ryan Cedars had the dream American childhood, spending most of their time outdoors. Their love of fishing stayed with them into adulthood, with their first business being a custom boat and fishing rod company. But whenever the brothers actually went fishing, they ran into a huge problem. Their coolers always broke. See, the brothers used their coolers not to just store beer and fish, but also as a platform in which to cast their lines from. Even the highest end coolers from companies like Igloo couldn't withstand the strain, meaning outdoorsmen everywhere were wasting 40 bucks on buying new ones all the time. So in 2006, the brothers decided to fix the problem themselves, and they started Yeti. It was to design coolers that were built to last. While other companies sold at low prices, Yeti went all in in pursuing a higher premium market that nobody else tapped into. Their first ultra strong cooler dropped in 2006 at a price tag of $300. 10X was the brother's philosophy. It's 10 times the price for 10 times the quality, and it led to way more than 10X the profit. By 2012, Yeti was the dominant high-end outdoorsman company. And today, Yeti is worth over $3 billion. Elon Musk is starting a new AI company to compete with the company that he co-founded. Most people don't know that OpenAI, the ChatGPT company, was co-founded by Elon Musk. So why is he making a new company to compete with them? Well, here's a brief history of OpenAI and ChatGPT. Back in 2015, Elon was speaking out about the potential dangers of AI, but nobody was listening to him. So alongside partners like Peter Thiel, they decided to create OpenAI as a nonprofit research group to advance artificial intelligence. They knew if AI wasn't researched properly, it would become a threat to humanity. This is why OpenAI was nonprofit, so the research would stay unbiased. But in 2018, it became clear that OpenAI was going to run out of money. So they opened a for profit arm and took in investments, including $10 billion from Microsoft. Elon saw this profit seeking as too dangerous to be involved with, and he stepped down from the board. By 2023, OpenAI is a worldwide hit, and their latest product, GPT 4, is getting a little too sophisticated, leading Elon. Elon Musk and many others to call for a six month pause on development of AI. This is so governments and companies could set up safeguards against it. Elon clearly doesn't think this pause will be long enough though, as in April, he started a new company called X.AI, and it's likely to compete with the project he himself has co-founded. This college dropout became a billionaire by selling their rendition of Photoshop to Adobe. In 2007, Dylan Field partnered up with Evan Wallace to create an online design tool called Figma. And in the beginning stages, it attracted $4 million from investors. One thing to take the product to new heights, Dylan and his team realized that there was a huge issue within design teams. There was no option for collaboration. Now multiple people can access Figma and make designs in real time, with Figma now being known as the Google Docs for designers. With the disruption in the design world, Adobe felt the need to shell out $20 billion to acquire Figma, making the new founders billionaires. These two founders created a multi-million dollar company because of their love for running. John Luc Diard and Nicholas Mermaud were avid runners but not fans of the running shoes that were on the market. So they set out to solve this issue. And initially they created a shoe prototype for themselves. Word got out and their accidental founded brand, Hoka 1-1, gained a lot of attraction. The oversized outsoles that the Hokas are notorious for supports downhill running, a function that leveraged the brand from other competitors. And their minimal design, weight, and style became popular among all types of runners. And in 2013, the brand was acquired by the Deckers Outdoor Corporation. With new management on Hoka's side, the brand's revenue has increased from 70 million to $335 million. What are your thoughts on these shoes? Mark Zuckerberg has lost over $100 billion in personal wealth over the past 13 months. Meta has continued to not hit their quarterly earnings, which is causing Mark's own personal wealth to take a huge hit. The company has been focusing on the long game, which is investing into the metaverse and trying to build out that side of the team. With this going on, a lot of advertisers are moving over to TikTok. Meta has been seeing a consistent decrease in advertisement spending. The competition of TikTok versus IG Reels has been proven quite challenging for Mark and his team. This could be a huge reason of why Mark is losing a lot of personal wealth and Meta itself is on the decline. This person is building a franchise empire with the world's biggest bouncy house. Antonio Nieves created the company Funbox, which brings a large bouncy house that can fit up to 400 people to your local mall. Originally, the idea was taken from Antonio's previous business, which was a selfie museum. He created a 25,000 square foot bouncy house that has multiple rooms and sections, but finding someone to manufacture this wasn't easy. After going through hundreds of factories, Antonio finally landed on the one that could create his vision. It took a team of 80 designers to complete the bouncy house. Today, the company currently franchises these out while bringing thousands of visitors each week. This guy makes hundreds of thousands of dollars per year by selling tiny cinder blocks. When Matt Hoffman 
Obama was searching for a product to start his own business with, he came across a Reddit post showcasing mini cinder blocks. Trying to get his hands on these blocks, Obama found that the only place to purchase them was sold out. And that's when his entrepreneur light bulb went off and he knew what he had to do. Over the next several weeks, Hoffman taught himself how to 3D print molds of mini products, leading him to create his own mini models. And he put them up for sale on his website. He found his first taste of success when a Reddit post helped his business sell thousands of mini products in a span of a day. Finding early success, Hoffman began showing off his business to hobby enthusiast sites and shops. They loved his mini products so much, they gave him free publicity in the form of articles featuring his products. This success pushed Hoffman to continue to produce a massive line of miniatures from lumber to masonry, street signs, tools, and more. Today, Hoffma and his brand of mini materials are the largest producers of mini construction materials in the market. You make Google billions when you click here to prove that you're not a robot. Don't you hate when you're just trying to log in and suddenly you get accused of not being a human by one of these, a reCAPTCHA? Well, you can blame this guy, Louis Von Han, who invented reCAPTCHA with some partners in college. Originally, reCAPTCHA made users decipher text written in warp, squiggly fonts. While it might have seemed annoying to users, it was a great solution since computers had trouble deciphering and consistent fonts. And coincidentally, Google was having trouble with that exact issue since they were trying to digitize every book in existence. So Google bought reCAPTCHA in 2009 and used it to launch Google Books. But a few years later, Google finds something else that computers aren't great at deciphering, and that's driving. You see, Google is racing other tech giants to make self-driving cars through its new company, Waymo. Google saw a new opportunity to extract free labor. They started replacing squiggly letters with the pictures of streets and asking people to pick out things like buses, stop signs, and bicycles from millions of different angles. Google feeds all that human-driven data into Waymo, making it better at self-driving, and now has a valuation of $30 billion today. The rapper Diddy is officially a billionaire, and here's how. Sean Combs, famously known as Diddy, is ranked as the second richest hip-hop artist in the US, taking Kanye's spot after multiple brands dropped him. Diddy dropped out of college to become an intern at Uptown Records, where he was promoted to VP of the company within one year. He was then fired in 1993, but at this point, he established his own record label with some of the biggest names under him. Just a year later, Diddy negotiated a $15 million deal to merge with Arista Records, and it was under this label that he eventually began his successful rap career. With his debut album, No Way Out, which became massively successful, and just one song on the album makes $2,000 a day. Now Diddy is valued at $1 billion due to his entrepreneurial hustle and his multiple lucrative partnerships and assets, including Ciroc Vaca and De Leon Tequila. This billionaire who owned an airline and F1 team lost all his money and is now on the run from the Indian government. Vijay Malia was one of India's most popular billionaires, starting out his success with United Breweries, which gave him a large ego and the name King of Good Times. Vijay grew his brewery to one of the best alcohol producers in India. He then ventured into the airline industry in 2005, where he began the company Kingfisher Airlines. His success was short-lived when it didn't take off. Even though he owed many people millions of dollars and was billions in debt, Vijay decided to buy the Forza India Formula One team. This success was short-lived when people decided to come forward, claimed he was involved in money laundering and fraud, taking his IOU tab over $1 billion while fleeing to the UK in hopes of not getting caught. Vijay was still pressed with criminal charges in India and was forced to leave the UK. These founders couldn't find comic books with strong black characters, so they created them. Then Kevin Hart and Mark Cuban invested $500,000 in their business. Husband and wife duo Manuel and Giselle Godoy founded their company Black Sands Entertainment to draw attention to the unheard characters of mainstream media. They began their company in 2017, telling stories about African history before slavery. This became a wide success, and they were able to scale their business from making $40,000 in sales in their first year to over $200,000 in their next. After appearing on the show Shark Tank, Mark Cuban and Kevin Hart became investors in their company, offering $500,000 for a 30% stake in that company. In their last fiscal year, Black Sands Entertainment made over $1.2 million in revenue. Hi everybody, we hope you like that video. Be sure to click the like and subscribe buttons to make sure you see more of Entrepreneur in your feed. We have investment pitch TV shows, tips on starting your business, interviews with successful entrepreneurs, and much, much more.